Good evening, everyone. Thank you for spending time to join in the lecture in Sunday evening. Um, today, uh, I wanted to introduce a very special Chinese medicine treatment to, to, uh, to all of you. And uh, during my practicing, my I always been asked the questions. So Dr. Lily, uh, apart from you do acupuncture or herbs, uh, massage or cupping therapy, what can I do myself? Actually, I like these questions. And this is means uh, the patient want to do something for themselves. So now, today, I just introduced a very good, efficient way to answer the question, and which is use medical qigong to help yourself. It's like you do acupuncture by yourself without needles every day. And because of timing, financial problems, we can't come to have acupuncture every day. So medical qigong is the answer. So people were asking, what is medical qigong? I never heard about it. Okay, now that's beginning. I want to let you know what it is. And during this lecture, I will introduce the concept of qi and qi disease, introducing medical qigong. And also I will guide in all of you to have a try, to have a feeling about it. And also I tell you what you expecting after the very first time practicing. And that at last uh, you can ask him question. What is qi? And qi is the Chinese word of, for life energy. According to Chinese medicine, qi is the animating power that flows through all living things. Every living being is filled with it. And the qi allow us, we can move, we, it can warm, protecting, transformer, and hold it. For example, every day we eat, we sleep, we go to toilet, etc. They all need our qi to function normally. If our qi getting disease, so even the simple things we take it for, for granted, eating, sleeping, and go to toilet, it can be difficult. So where is the qi? You always say the qi, qi. And um, so where is it? People were asking. So qi cannot be seen or scientifically measured, but qi existed. So like uh, the mobile phone, the signals, we can see it. But uh, without the signal, our phone can't work. In. So we believe the signal exists. But qi also like uh, that, they can't be seen, but they're, they're there. So in Chinese medicine, we said the qi is moving in the meridians. We call it the qi subway. We can see this photo. It's like uh, the subway all over our body. That's the qi was moving inside. Therefore, uh, obstruction or blockage to the normal flow of the qi can create pain or illness, such as stagnant, deficient, rebellious, or thinking. So we will we will talk about that later, okay? So what is, is qi disease? Qi disease, and normally qi disease when you go to doctors, doctor can't find anything wrong with you. 
according to the machine, according to the blood test. Dog said, you're nothing wrong, you are very healthy, but you feel awful. So that's, that's what we talk about, the chi stagnation, chi deficiency, chi sinking, and the chi rebalance. For example, chi stagnation with dampness and water, the wheel showing cyst everywhere, like an uh, orary cyst, uh, and sometimes you have lumps all over the body, so that's it. And now another one is chi clump with dampness, phlegm, and blood. There's a nodule, like a fibroid, thyroid nodules. And we normally, we call it a cold nodule. And then if the cold nodule not treated properly or in time, so hot nodule, which very scary, C word, cancer will appear. So that's just about what chi disease, how they develop, how they, when you're not treated properly, how they can go. So now we should ask him, why I? Why is now? Why is in my breast? Why in my lungs? So they all, we can all digging out the roots, why we have this. So, why? During the practicing, we noticed most chi disease are caused by emotional trauma. Just imagine uh, if you do 10 days of garden work, very, very heavy garden work, you feel tired, you, you may feel aching all over, but after you go home, you can have a very good sleep, you can sleep over and not wake up. Although you feel tired, it will be aching, but you're happy. You can sleep well. So that's one condition. Another condition, if with 10 days, you have an experience of divorce and lost your job, lost your loved family members, engage in a lawsuit, and even someone put a gun at you. So just imagine you have the experience of that. Awful. So that trauma will cause you a consequence of very bad illness. So, so that's why we always find the chi disease mostly is caused by emotional trauma. Some trauma is unexpected, the accident, we can't avoid it. But some of them, we can, we can avoid it. We can use our way, we can use our wisdom to dissolve it, to sort it. So just now we talk about uh, all kinds of qi disease. So uh, for example, I tried to give you a, a, a example, uh, li, liver chi stagnation symptoms, which is quite often happened. So normally say for example, you can have uh, the liver chi uh, stagnation can cause the temple headache, can cause the depressed, can, can make you for ladies, can have PMS, which is tender breast, bloated, moldy, clumsy, and you can have the rib pains. Sometimes you feel, why I have rib pains? And also the rib pain can be moving and feel frustrated, irritated. And also a lot of people will have short tension, said, oh, I have short tension, very tight. A lot of people know this is stress. When they come to me, they say, I'm very stressed, I feel tense. So that's also a symptom of liver chi stagnation. And you also can feel blood vision, and also you feel floaters in your eyes, and you feel stressed. So this is a common simple, sim symptoms of liver chi stagnation. I think uh, everyone here more or less will suffer it sometime. 
So now we talk about uh, the kidney qi deficiency. We talk about qi deficiency. Deficient means not enough. So when you have qi uh, kidney qi deficiency, you normally will have feel cold. Your your hand and feet you always feel cold, never warm, and you feel you lost the hair, and your absent mind you can't concentrate. You have tinnitus, and your memory is not good. And uh, for the for the little ones, sometimes you have bad waiting. That normally means the uh, con constitution. They uh, they have. Uh, they they've been born with a kidney qi deficiency, and for adults you can have incontinence. That's very embarrassing. I have I do have some um, clients come here. They wear the pads all the time, and and also you will for, for people will wake up during the night to go to the toilet many many times. Um, people can also suffer edema. And feel lower back aching. It's not a big pain, it's just aching. Feel uncomfortable. You always feel, oh, my back is not right. So that's also kidney chi deficiency. And for ladies, um, some some young girls, they are uh, period very late. And for people, for some ladies, they have period, but sometimes the period is just stopped. And uh, also for for couples, young couples, they find the difficult to fertility. And for for gentlemen, they may suffer premature ejaculation or like a counter erection, all sorts of uh, symptoms, which is uh, all belongs to kidney chi deficiency. And we talk about the rebelling cheese. And uh, this is a very typical picture I, I choose from the internet. So say for example, when people was very angry, so their chi can go up. You can see this, uh, this is very exaggerated, but you can see people can have a red face and this, the, your blood, see the chi was rushing to the head and which, if it's very dangerous, if it's very bad, it can cause a um, stroke, which is like a brain hemorrhage. That's, that can be very dangerous, fatal, and some sometimes it can cause heart attack. So that's called rebelling chi. Also rebelling chi can result from like a vomiter. And so our food is supposed to go down, but they go up, that's called rebelling chi. So how to treat chi disease? So is any chi for sale? Someone said that you can buy any chi in the pharmacy, anywhere? I don't think so. Okay, Chinese medicine has no 2,000 years, and sometimes they said even 7,000 years or 10,000 years, whatever. So a girl, to use qigong to cure qi disease. So we use qigong to cure qi disease, use qi to treat qi disease. So what does qigong mean? Why is it called qigong? Actually, qi is energy, we said before, and gong is to make qi work. So, Generally speaking, it's through sort of our qigong practicing that qi in the body working normally. That is qigong. So actually, qigong is, however, one of the most powerful system of healing you healing you can do for yourself. So, how does qigong work? Uh, actually, Qigong is acting on meridians and acupuncture points. It's similar to the acupuncture treatment, but even more holistic and more handy. You can do anytime, anywhere, when you want it. And also, by stimulating the meridians and massaging acupuncture and uh, Qigong can replenish qi deficiency, 
clear up qi stagnation and coming qi in inversion, which is like just now we talk about the rebellion qi. How does qi work? So after qi works normally, emotions can also be normal. Just now we talk about the qi diseases because of a lot of emotion trauma. So after you practice qigong for a while, you will find you no longer complaining. Your emotion become normal, calm, and you starting to know love and death. You're not grieving anymore, and you understand contentment and gratitude, and you understand separation. Say, for example, you have a divorce, you just can't move on, you just resent it, you hate it. You say, why why, why he or she do this to me? It's not fair. But when you, after your chi become normally, you, you just say, you can, you start to understand. Oh, that's a relief. That's maybe it's best for that. So you understand the separation and you understand the disease and the health. And um, so that's the thing, you change. You don't uh, struggle your emotion disturbance. And normally this kind of change, acupuncture can do it. And medicine, uh, chemicals can do it and surgery can do it. So that is a very good benefit you practice Qigong. So Qigong classifications. Qigong has a history of more than 2,000 years or some people say 7,000 years. And there are tens of thousands kind of Qigong exercises. And there are many classification methods. But we normally use three level classifications. So the first level is called advanced Qigong, which people will practice Normally, it look like uh, you can see this myth in this picture. The people was uh, practicing the deep mountains, and uh, they they are aim to gain some special functions. Say, for example, they can open their third eyes. They can see things. They can have special abilities. Uh, but uh, this is only a few people can do that. Not normal people can do. Um, and the, the second level is called the intermediate Qigong. And it's normally very known. A lot of people know about Tai Chi, Yoga, Ba Duan Ji. And normally this kind of Qigong is when you are not sick, you're quite healthy. So you can choose this level to keep well-being, to keep you feel nice, feel happy. So that's a kind of like a hobby or like, uh, you know, everyday practicing. So under this, the last uh, level is called the primary Qigong, which is the medical Qigong, which belongs to this uh, level. And like Xiang Gong, Guo Ling Gong. And uh, normally this Qigong, which is called the medical Qigong, we, which means when you're sick, when you have symptoms, you normally, we, normally suggest you to practice this medical qigong. So what is medical qigong? Why is it called medical qigong? So medical qigong is, has been pro proved effectively by clinical research and statistics and promoted in the medical field. It is a part of traditional Chinese medicine therapy. So therefore, the teacher who teaching medical Qigong must understand the TCM theory, which allow him or her choose the correct exercises for patient, guide the patient, the method of reinforce, like a tonic or detoxation or lifting or lower according to the patient's responding and also according to patient's symptoms. So that's, this is very important. 
So uh, I always tell people, and uh, you may can find some video on YouTube. There's a lot of resources you can find. But some of your video may be not always correct. It depends on everybody's practicing and they've been teaching. And um, so everybody have different uh, condition. So if you just follow the video without no without anybody guiding you, uh, without the person who know uh, the Chinese medicine theory, they can go wrong. They can have side effects. So uh, that's why that's quite important. The reason they call the medical qigong is like uh, the doctor prescribing uh, the, the the drugs to you. They need the uh, doctor's uh, uh, guiding. Mm. So, and the another thing is very good uh, thing of medical qigong is they must be simple and fast and effective. Simple means make everyone can do it from the five years old to 90 years old. Yeah, you need to let them can do it. If it's too complicated, that can't be uh, applied to uh, majority people. And the fast effective means uh, even from the first try, you have you may have some reactions, some effects, so that's fast. So if the medical chicken is, is not effective, so the teacher, we we'll need to change to think about to help you choosing another qigong exercises. The most important thing about the medical qigong is they can let the patient change from passive therapy to active therapy, which means the patient said, "Ask me what I can do for myself." That's a really good um, question and very responsible for your own health. So what medical qigong I want to introduce you today is xianggong. And um, xianggong have the, uh, the following um, good points. So the exercise are simple and can be practiced by anyone aged from five to 19. The effect is fast and uh, will be effective on the same day normally, on the same day of practicing. And uh, this Qigong is a wide range of indication. According to Chinese clinical research statistics, it can treat 365 disease, expect for cancer, liver disease, and paralyzed patient, because paralyzed patients, they can't move. They lie on bed, they can't move. But for some people, they're paralyzed, but if they can move their arm and hand, they also can sit in there to practice. Um, so certain diseases, nervous headache, hay fever, asthma, endometriosis, insomnia, palpitations, tinnitus, and uh, in can be normally this kind of uh, all this uh, disease can be cured and rooted. That's uh, during our uh, clinical practicing and uh, we, uh, we have this uh, conclusion. This is this uh, um, disease we uh, just say is really good effect. And uh, this Qigong, no need uh, complicated uh, other Qigong techniques, such as uh, breathing techniques, mindfulness, as long as the movements are correct, we'll do the work. So, just now I said, finally, my open disease can be cured by myself. I make myself know well, I can make myself healing. So what can you benefit from medical qigong? The medical qigong is preventing <clears throat> future diseases. 
we always say prevention is always better than cure. And also a good investment for health. It saves a lot of time and money to visit doctors to doctors, therapist to therapist. I think a lot of people here do have the experience, sometimes feel very frustrated, feel hopeless and come here and say, Lily, can you help me? I know I said, yes, I can. I try my best. So I always tell my client, I can make myself sick. I definitely can heal myself by doing medical chibo. And also, of course, you sometimes need acupuncture treatment as well. So that's what I that's what you can expect from practice chibo. And uh, so some people say, oh, I that's good. This sounds very good. I won't do it. But at first, you need to, to make sure, very important, you make sure you, when you can invest in time. I'm willing to spend time on my own house. That's very important. Sometimes we, all these years, we lost ourselves. We, um, we lost it. We can do anything for our children for our partners, for any other any other family members, but we don't have time for ourselves. We lost it. So before you decided to learn this, you need to make sure you find yourself back and you find you try to learning how to love yourself. And the medical qigong is like taking medicine. You need to practice it every day when you are sick but no need to practicing after recovery. However, if you continue to practice, will be keep you healthy for a long time and preventing the, the future disease. For example, some people have a, a family of heart disease. Some people have a, a family of diabetes or uh, the high blood pressure, all kinds. And then when you're young, when you don't have it, so, then you said, oh, I want to do something to prevent it. So that's a very good way to do. So, and you might you may think, what you said is so good. What does it look like? Okay, now let's have a go. Follow me. And before we do it, I, I have to tell you something in, in advance. You will have reactions after first time practicing. And the reactions like uh, you, you may have tears, sweating, numbness in the foot, pain, swelling, and you may have dry hand if you have uh, lung problems, if you have uh, palpitations, chest tightness, that's normally indicating you have heart problem. And you may, if you, you feel your hand is shaking. That's what we said in Chinese medicine, you have in the wind, the wind inside you was make you shaking. And you may have cold hand and feet. That means the wind and cold syndrome, deficiency in this syndrome. You feel fatigue. Sometimes you feel like you hardly persist in practicing. That's normally indicating you have spleen dampness. And during the practice, you may yawn a lot. That's indicate you have chi deficiency, hypoxia, and sleep, spleen deficiency. And you also may have dryness and sweating. So normally, as people with internal heat, excessive heat, and they normally will have a red, very red tone. And a lot of burning sensation, that means it's heat. And also you may feel pain in the cough. That's an indication you have deficient of qi. And you may feel pain in a certain part uh, of the organs. So that indicates that place you have qi stagnations. The place of old disease is there. They will like your old symptoms maybe come back. So that means your qi start to work. The qi is like a, a doctor inside you. So when they're ill, they can't do the job. But when you try to make it healthy, 
try, try to make it working normally, they start to checking your problems. So they will bring your old symptoms back. They, they try to detoxing your coding outside, your heating outside. So that's why you have all these reactions. You may feel itching, like a aunt growing. That means the chi will start moving, starting to uh, to work, to 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 reaching the area which have problems. And uh, but all all about this are, are very very good uh, positive reactions. Uh, a lot of people report it is they are sleeping much better. That's a very common uh, positive reactions. So you can have much more strange reactions. And I was waiting for um, the uh, tomorrow, and uh, you maybe report to me. Okay, now let's start. Have a go. Mm -hmm. 